Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we derive the Cartesian equation for a line in three dimensions. And the best way to do this, I feel, is by looking at the vector parametric form for the equation of a line, which I'm assuming you're familiar with. And that is that R represents the position vector of any point P, say, that is on this line. Let's say it has coordinates x, y, z. x1, y1, z1 represents a known fixed point on the line. And Lmn represents a vector parallel to the line. So in other words, to find any position vector of any point on the line, r, is equal to going up to the fixed point, x1, y1, z1, with this position vector, and then going any amount, lambda say, in the direction of this vector here. And it will take us to the point P. OK, so that's just a brief recap then of the vector parametric form for the equation of a line. Now to get towards working out what the Cartesian form is going to be, what we know is that this position vector r would be x, y, z as a column vector then. And it would satisfy this equation. So I can say that therefore, if we just put x, y, z in as a column vector, OK, x, y, z, then that must satisfy the sum of these two vectors here. So if we group them under one vector, by adding them, we're going to have x1 plus lambda l, and we're going to have y1 plus lambda m, and z1 plus lambda n. Now to develop an equation now, what I'm going to look at is the i, j and k components. If our two vectors are equal, then the i components must be equal. So if we look at the i components, we see that x must be equal to x1 plus lambda l. Similarly, if we compare the j components, we must get y equals y1 plus lambda m. And if we look at the k components, then z must be equal to z1 plus lambda n. Now from each of these equations, I can make lambda the subject. And if we do that, from this one, lambda is going to equal x minus x1 divided by l. Lambda for this one is going to equal y minus y1 all divided by m. And finally, lambda for this one is going to be z minus z1 divided by n. Now because all of these equations equal lambda, they must equal one another. So what we've got then is therefore x minus x1 divided by l is equal to y minus y1 divided by m equals z minus z1 divided by n. And they all equal lambda. Now this particular form is the form that I would encourage you to remember for the Cartesian equation for a line in three dimensions. And look how it's built up. We've got then x, y, z represents any general point on the line. x1, y1, z1 are the coordinates of a known fixed point on the line. And l, m and n are essentially the components of the vector that is parallel to the line. The direction ratios, as they're sometimes called. Now I've got a couple of questions here that I'd encourage you to work through. It's to find the Cartesian equations of these two lines. And in question two, something special happens, and I'll take you through that. But 
you might want to just pause the video at this stage and try and find out what those Cartesian equations are. Okay, welcome back then if you did have a go. Well, the first one is fairly straightforward. We've got i minus 2j plus 3k. That represents then the position vector of a fixed point on the line. So the coordinates then are going to be 1, minus 2, 3. And the direction ratios are going to be 2, 5, minus 1. So for number 1 then, the Cartesian equation is just going to be x minus 1, okay, divided by 2 equals y minus minus 2, so that's going to be y plus 2, and that's divided by 5. And this is equal to z minus z1, which is the 3, divided by minus 1. I could leave it like that, or I could times this term here, top and bottom by minus 1, and rewrite it as 3 minus z over 1. But that's up to you, OK? But that's essentially it. Now, in number 2, how did you get on if you did try this one? Well, the point on the line has coordinates 4, 3, and because there's no k here, it will be 0. So 4, 3, 0 is a point on the line. As for the direction ratios, it's going to be minus 1. There's no j component here, so that would be 0. And you've got 2 here for the value for n. So our equation is going to be x minus 4 divided by the direction ratio minus 1. But when it comes on to the y value, we're going to have y minus 3, OK, y minus 3, divided by the direction ratio, which would have to be 0 for the j part. But you can't divide by 0, it'd be undefined. So what we do is we forget about this term as such, OK? So we just take that out. So going on to the next part, it would be z minus z1. Well, we've got 0k, so that would be 0, divided by the direction ratio 2. So we've got that. But what about the y part? Well, all we do is we just set y equal to 3. So if we just put a comma there, y equals 3. So that's essentially it. But what I'd like to do is just take this a bit further, explain a bit more about this particular line and how we handle this y equals 3. Well, if I was to multiply top and bottom here by negative 1, I'd therefore have 4 minus x over 1. We'll just leave it as 4 minus x. And here we've got equals z over 2. And if I now multiply both sides by 2, we end up with z equals 8 minus 2x. And we've also got then y equals 3. So what does this look like? Well, because y equals 3, then we're looking at this line being drawn in the plane y equals 3. And you should be able to see this in the diagram that I've got over here. I'll just rotate it a bit and you can then see the line z equals 8 minus 2x drawn in it. OK, well I hope it's given you some idea then about how we go about finding the Cartesian equation of a line. And this is the form that the equation of a line in three dimensions, then the Cartesian form, takes. Okay?